All right, now that you understand the circular flow diagram, I can now try and begin ex and explain to you the concepts of supply and demand. Uh, you've probably heard of supply and demand as economic concepts. And what I want to do is I want to use the circular flow diagram to sort of introduce to you these concepts of supply and demand. Now, what's happening down here on the lower part of the uh, circular flow diagram is when buyers and sellers come to this product market, okay, uh, the buyers want to buy, or the individuals, they want to buy products that were produced by the firms, um, and the sellers want to sell, the firms want to sell the products that they produced, right? The buyers are going to hand the sellers money, and the sellers are going to hand the buyers a product. And so the buyer is going to hand money, and the seller is going to hand a product, and the buyer is going to take the product, and the seller is going to take the money. Okay? And what we call that is a transaction. So this is a market transaction. When the market transaction takes place, the seller is happy that they got money and the buyer is happy that they got a product. Okay? But in order for that market transaction to take place, the buyers and the sellers have to agree on two very important things. Buyers and sellers must. They need to agree on two things. The first thing that they need to agree on, because we're dealing in money, they have to agree on how much money the buyer is going to give the seller. And that's called the price. So they have to agree on the price of the product that is being sold. If the buyer offers $10 and the seller wants $15 for the product, they are not in agreement on the price. And therefore, a market transaction will not take place. The buyer and the seller have to agree on the same amount of money that's being paid for the product. And the amount of money that's paid for the product is called the price. The second thing that buyers and sellers have to agree on, they have to agree on how much of the product the seller is going to give the buyer. They might both agree on a price of $15, but the buyer may say, well, for $15, I want three of them. And the seller may say, well, I'm only willing to give you two of them for $15. So now, even though they have agreed on $15, they are not agreeing on how much is being exchanged. So let's say that they eventually both agree on a three, a quantity of three for a price of $15. The buyer then says, okay, I will give you $15 and then you give me three items. And now they, and if they, and if they both agree on $15 is the money and three units is the quantity, then they will make the exchange and we will have a market transaction. And the number, and so how much the seller, how much product the seller is going to give the buyer, that's called quantity. Quantity. And so buyers and sellers must agree on the price, and they also have to agree on the quantity. And if they do not agree on the price, and if they do not agree on the quantity, then there will be no market transaction. So Without agreement, there will be no market transaction. Okay? All right. So we understand that, that the buyer and seller must agree on the price and they must agree on the quantity. Well, what does it mean to agree? Okay? So what does it mean to agree? agree. For a buyer and seller to agree on something, 
the buyer and seller have to both be willing to agree, and they also have to be able to agree. So let's say that I'm the seller and I have 100 units that I'm selling. And the person wants the buyers, uh, this particular buyer wants three of them. C am I able to agree to give them three? Yes, because I have enough units to give them three. Am I willing to agree on three? Well, if I don't really like the circumstances of giving them three, whatever those circumstances are, then no, I am not willing to agree. So I may be able to agree, but if I'm not willing to agree, then I'm not going to agree, and now we are not agreeing on quantity, okay? If the buyer ha doesn't, let's say the buyer only has $10, but the agreement would be for $15. Well, the buyer is, is willing to give $15, but the buyer only has $10, therefore they are not able to agree on $15. So the buyer is not able to agree on a price because they are not able to pay the price. So in order for a buyer and a seller to agree with each other, both the buyer and the seller have to be willing and able to agree on the price and the quantity. And so when a buyer so the buyer basically has to be, this is what we're going to say, the buyer has to be willing and able to buy. And the seller has to be willing and able to sell, okay? If the buyer is willing and able to buy, then they are able to agree on the price and agree on the quantity. If the seller is willing, able, willing and able to sell, then they are able, then they are prepared to agree on the price and agree on the quantity, and then we can have a market transaction. And so, if we go over here to the circular flow diagram, under here, under buyers on this portion of the circular flow, I'm going to put that the buyers are willing to buy and they are able to buy. And over here on the firm's side, we're going to say that the firms are willing to sell and we're, we're going to say that the firms are able to sell. And now the last thing I want to say about this is when we think of all of the buyers, all of the buyers, all of the individuals or the households that are willing to buy and able to buy, we call that demand in economics. The group of all the buyers who are willing to buy and able to buy are called demand. And the group of all of the sellers who are willing to sell and able to sell, we call them supply. And so what we have here is we have this situation where we have the demand, we call also call buyers, sometimes we call them demanders. We have all of these demanders who are going to agree with all of the suppliers on the price and the quantity that is going to be exchanged. And therefore, because both demanders and suppliers are agreeing on price and agreeing on quantity, the relationships of demand and supply are both, these are both forces, groups, where they, they can be represented as relationships between price and quantity. Let me say that another way. 
that basically we can represent the willingness and ability to buy as a relationship between the prices that they are willing to pay and the quantities that they want for the prices that they're willing to pay. And the same thing with sellers. We can represent their willingness and ability to sell as a relationship between the prices that they are willing to sell for and the quantities that they are willing to sell, willing and able, that they are willing and able to sell for each one of those prices. And because price and quantity are both numbers, they're numerical, mathematical numbers, we can actually graph we can actually graph these, this, these relationships between price and quantity on a coordinate plane. So I'm going to draw a coordinate plane over here. Now this is the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. I mean, just so you know, we could have a, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And this is the, um, and so this point right here is 0, 0, but over here the x's are negative, down here, the, the y's are negative, and in this quadrant over here, quadrant 3, uh, the, both x and y are negative. But here's the thing is, in economics, in the real world, price is not negative and quantity is not negative. We are only going to graph these relationships between price and quantity in the positive, positive quadrant, the first quadrant. And instead of using x and y, as the names of the axes, we're going to use P for price and Q for quantity. And so we're going to graph these relationships between price and quantity. Those relationships are supply and demand.